Hi everyone, welcome to week six of Chica and Sunset's Take a Walk. Um, this week covers April 26th through May 2nd. Um, we're coming from you from Roan, Tennessee. Um, just uh, off Roan Mountain uh, is a hostel in the town called Doe River. Uh, and we're here tonight and tomorrow uh, because of weather. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to get some, some bad weather, so we're kind of holding up here. But anyway, uh, so during the last seven days, uh, we hiked from Hot Springs, North Carolina, to Low Gap Camp. Um, so basically from mile 273 uh, on the Appalachian Trail to uh, 358.7 uh, for our biggest week so far uh, of 83.7 uh, miles uh, we'll get into the money, the mileage, and the, um, I guess we just did the mileage, didn't we? Uh, and, uh, uh, the milestones. So the money works out this way. Uh, we spent $160 for accommodations. Uh, we stayed two nights at the Super 8, uh, hotel. And that was in Irwin, Tennessee. Uh, in town food, we, uh, used up 87 bucks. Um, and that was going out to eat um, food for in the hotel room and things like that. Uh, resupply was $57. Other, uh, we spent $12 on postage, $4 on laundry, uh, $14 uh, worth of shuttle money. Uh, it was seven basically into the town, uh, seven back to the trailhead uh, in um, Irwin. Sorry about that. So the total was $335. Uh, $335 divided by 83.7 gave us a um, per mile expenditure of $4 divided by person. That's $2 per person per mile, which is kind of our sweet spot. Um, that's exactly where we'd like to be. Uh, so the total uh, spent so for, far for six weeks uh, on the trail has been 2,158. Um, so you can take that and uh, divide uh, that by 358.7 and you can get uh, the to total cost per mile uh, so far for us. Um, I forgot to do that, so I don't have that number handy. Anyway, so that's that's the money. And uh, my uh, milestones, uh, you know, one of the reasons that number is so big is we hit... Um, our first 16 mile day um, that week has ended uh, and we're three two days into the next one and we've already done two more 16s uh, so so <laughs> they'll sneak preview to to next week but we're also zeroing when we shouldn't be because of weather uh, but anyway so we hit our first 16 mile and that was 16.6 and it, it felt uh, uh, pretty good um, we hit the 300 mile mark um, and you know, also, I want to thank everybody uh, for uh, wishing me happy birthday on my 45th milestone uh, of living this life. So uh, I appreciate all the comments. I tried to either like or uh, love or comment and respond to each of them, but I'm sure I missed a couple. Okay, so that's the, that's the numbers and the milestones. Let's get to your questions. T-Rex. Uh, for gear, what is more important, weight or durability? Okay, so for us, um, uh, all of the above, uh, it really depends. Um, we look at we look at gear in four different ways. We look at uh, how much it weighs, uh, how durable it is, how much it costs, uh, and if it has multiple uses. Uh, we mix all those things up, and depending on what the piece of gear is, uh, we determine um, uh, what's most important to us and, and then we make the decision. Um, another factor would be comfort. Um, so a great, a great, uh, example is our tent. Our tent, um, you know, we were going between, uh, uh, Z-Pax Triplex, which was about $900, maybe close to a thousand when, when all the shipping and everything was done. So that's a three person tent. Uh, or the um, one we have now, which is 
the uh, Big Agnes Copper Spur 3, uh, which we it retails for 500 we bought it for 350 um, and that included the uh, Tyvek ground cover, um, and that's all. So, uh, <clears throat> so the reason we went with the Big Agnes, okay, the Big Agnes is four pounds, the z Pax is a pound and a half, so clearly z Pax wins in that category. z Pax was three times as expensive, almost, um, so all it really had going for it was, uh, was lightness. And since Chica and I are sharing weight in our backpacks and we're not super concerned about having the most least amount uh, in our backpacks possible, we went with comfort. Uh, the Copper Spur has a couple things that the Z Packs doesn't. Uh, it's it's um, dual walled, so you have less condensation. You can take the fly off and sleep under the stars, but still be protected from the bugs. Um, there's copious amounts of room for a tall guy like me. Um, there's lots of pockets. Um, so, so the Z Packs, or I'm sorry, the the Copper Spur won. So far, it's been durable enough, um, except for the time we got it caught in thorn bushes, and that was our own fault. Okay, um, so that that gives you an example of of how we valued comfort over comfort and cost over weight savings and it really just depends on which piece of gear on what's most important to us uh, Allison wants us to talk about shelters versus uh, stealth camping versus uh, hostels okay so so I you know I think shelters to me is is camping light um, you go into a shelter for a couple, there's, there's definitely benefits, but typically at a shelter, not only do you have a, a, a three-sided lean-to to sleep under, uh, you typically have a privy, you typically have bear cables or bear boxes, um, and you typically have your water source there, uh, and as well as tenting sites uh, at the shelter. So, so people who stay in shelters, uh, number one, a lot of people do it early on in the trail. Um, there's also a very large social component to staying in shelters. Um, so the people who are, are interested in um, that part of the trail uh, tend to uh, congregate around sh uh, shelters. Uh, outside of the shelter site, there's typically tenting sites. Uh, and once again, that's kind of camping light because you still have access to the, the bear cables or bear boxes, uh, the water source as well as the trail community sleeping, you know, 40 or 50 feet from you. Uh, stealth sites are for um, basically getting away from the crowds. And that's what Chica and I really kind of prefer to do. Uh, and, and there's nothing, you know, you hang your own bear bag, uh, you either camel up uh, and get your water before you hit the, the stealth site because there's typically not water real close. Um, and then, you know, you are probably going to be the only tent, maybe one or two other people, uh, but that's, that's about it. Uh, hostel, uh, well, let me go back to the stealth camping site. The great thing about stealth camping is you can still utilize the services of shelters on your trip. So a lot of times it'll be cold or rainy, and midway through our hike, we'll stop at a shelter, get under the shelter, and have lunch. Um, just because we don't sleep there doesn't mean you can't use um, the amenities uh, or use the privy uh, instead of digging a cat hole. Uh, hostel is a totally different beast. Hostel is, is when you need to get off trail uh, and you want to get a shower, you want to do your laundry. Um, and, and, you know, hostel and hotel are, are pretty much synonymous. Uh, hostel is typically going to be um, a different crowd. Um, and in a lot of times they're communal rooms as opposed to a hotel you get your own room and uh, your own shower your own bath things like that you typically pay a lot more for a hotel uh, as a couple uh, that price difference doesn't matter as much okay uh, let's see uh, a follow-up question to that Allison uh, are you allowed to, to make camp anywhere? 
uh, what are the guidelines? Okay, so yeah, you know, leave no trace really uh, dictates that, that you camp somewhere that someone's already camped before, and, and usually those uh, areas are very well marked. Um, it's usually uh, a dirt area that a campsite was there. There's already a fire uh, pit uh, made of rocks or, or some other material um, there. Uh, you don't want to say, oh, that, that meadow looks beautiful with the green grass and plop your tent down. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you, you camp wherever uh, a camp has already been set up before. Um, there's a couple uh, areas where you can't do that. One is the, the Smokies, which we've talked about before. I believe there's some rules in uh, Shenandoah National Park uh, where you cannot camp a stealth camp within a quarter of a mile of a road, something like that I read or, or saw, uh, and a road kind of goes throughout the whole park, so it's pretty much the whole park you can't. Uh, someone in the comments, please correct me if, if I'm incorrect on this. Um, and then uh, the whites, uh, where you have the AMC huts. I'm not exactly sure what the rules are there, but it seems like stealth camping uh, is either frowned upon or, or illegal. Once again, uh, chime in on, in the comments if, if you know uh, the answer to that. Um, so those are kind of the guidelines. Okay, let's see, what else do we got here? Okay, uh, Ace Murphy 2. Um, so he asks a couple questions. Uh, first is, what's the most debated subject between us? Um, okay, so we, we were talking about this right before I started filming, and and you know we we work we've learned to work really well together, uh, and so we each have kind of our our own duties. Um, you know, at night I hang the bear bag, I get the water. Chica typically. Uh, starts the cooking and um, she helps filter the water uh, as well as as uh, she does the uh, the video editing um, our day-to-day -day activities center around three things basically how far are we going to go um, what are we going to do if, if if there's inclement weather um, and uh, you know what what are we going to eat uh, so as long as we're meeting those things, um, we're pretty cool. Uh, Chica uh, and I differ in our, our take on how we get things done. She's very much uh, a checklist person, uh, analytical, um, likes to crunch the numbers and, and, and come up with an exact plan. I'm very much more, hey, let's just uh, see how far we can go. Uh, she did remind me tonight uh, when we were talking about the subject, she's, she's like, you know, once you get a number in your head, uh, that's it. I, if I think we're going to go 17 miles that day, we're going 17 miles, whatever conditions dictate. Uh, so, so I do get bullheaded sometimes. But, uh, you know, I, I guess we really don't debate a whole lot. Usually one person is passionate about their position and the other person just says, okay, it's not worth my time to, to really argue. Um, and occasionally, you know, we come up with a scenario where it is important, but we don't see that on the trail too much just because uh, the subject matter is so, uh, it's the same every day. How far are we gonna go? What are we gonna eat? What do we do when, if the, the weather gets bad? Um, and, and, and that's about it. Uh, Do either of us wish for our own tent? You know, uh, I mentioned this in other videos. I snore a bit, uh, but even with that, uh, Chica said she she would rather sleep with me uh, in the tent. Um, it's nice to have the, the extra amount of room. Um, and for me, I, I would never want my own tent. Uh, I enjoy her company. Uh, <laughs> uh, if one of us could not hike, would the other continue? Um, that's a great question, and that's something that we discussed before we started, and we made the decision that if one of us could not hike, the other one would not continue. We would we would want to finish this, start and finish this together. Um, the only uh, caveat to that, I guess, is if one um, 
uh, is quitting for mental reasons. They're they're just tired. Um, the other, the other one has the um, responsibility to slap that person upside the head, say we decided to do this. Um, someone asked a similar question. Um, well, anyway, I'll get to it. I'm sure. Uh, another question from Ace Murphy two. Besides hiking, the one thing that has brought us closer. Uh, you know, I think just, just living with each other for 22 years. I really think Costa Rica, living there for four years, brought us a lot closer together. Um, you know, and, and our lives in Dallas were very stressful. Um, you know, we both had full-time careers. Mine usually had a, a starting day of about 10 or 11 hours. And, and that kind of expanded to, to wherever it needed to be. Um, so we saw each other in the morning, we saw each other at night, and then on the weekends most of the time. Um, so when we moved to Costa Rica, that's when we started to, to say, okay, we were having to live together and work together closely uh, every day for long periods of time. And that's, that's, we learned to do that uh, pretty quickly. There were some struggles at first, finding the, you know, a few times where we said oh, okay I need my space um, but that that time period uh, really brought us closer together and I think without that uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail this year uh, would be much more challenging okay moving on more questions uh, Terry asks how extensive was your training uh, okay, so in, in um, Costa Rica, we lived on the slope of Poaz Mount, uh, Poaz Volcano, uh, which is erupting right now as we speak. So I'm glad we're out of there. We still have friends in the area, so hopefully all is well. Um, we lived at an elevation about 4,700 feet, and um, we hiked daily six to eight miles. Now, this was, this was uh, fair weather hiking. Um, we did it in the morning during the rainy season. Uh, and, and avoided the rain, uh, but it was strenuous. Uh, we did it without packs, but we were doing six, you know, two hours worth of, of pretty vigorous activity a day. Um, so we got we got trimmed, uh, you know, we, we were fit, um, and then we decided, okay, our lease is up. We um, we need to still get gear, and we need to test that gear out. And shipping to Costa Rica is tough, so we ended our lease moved to Wisconsin, uh, where we stayed for six months before we started the trail. Okay, so that was basically winter in Wisconsin. So uh, getting out, we did a couple hikes uh, in the snow of five or six miles with our backpacks. Um, we got a gym membership and, and tried really hard to do uh, cardio on the treadmill, which is just god-awful. Um, so we really kind of let our, our, our physical fitness decline quite a bit in six months. Um, we were eating out and things like that. And uh, so, you know, I look like this kind of in Costa Rica. Uh, and you saw, you, you know, you've seen how I've changed over the past six weeks. Um, you, know, you can see how much weight I put on during those six months of uh, inactivity. So we started, um, I guess, the trail with a, a little bit of uh, fitness, uh, I guess some, some fitness memory, um, and, and that came back pretty quick, but uh, the six months were pretty light before uh, the trail. Terry also wants to expound on our popularity and positive comments on the wrap-up videos. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> we're so fortunate to have people watching and liking uh, our content. Uh, the wrap-up videos uh, were kind of my idea. I, I, I saw that, uh, well, just just like uh, the, the one book, the, one of the books I wrote on Costa Rica, I saw an area where people had not really um, delved into, and I wanted to answer questions uh, and and so that's kind of what I done with this did with this um, I saw that nobody was talking about how much they spent 
And we went, we spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure out how are we going to budget for this thing. And, and finally, we just started throwing stuff together. And I think we came up with a pretty good plan. Uh, but this, this whole weekly wrap-up really started with uh, let's document how we spend. How a uh, probably someone who has a budget that's upper upper middle uh, of what a typical Appalachian Trail through hiker spends. Uh, let's document it so people can have kind of a barometer on when they're planning their own trip. Um, and I'm so grateful that that people are acknowledging the fact that that this doesn't hasn't existed before. Uh, and you know I, I know I'm probably not the best person to. Uh, I'm not real precise, and uh, I'm probably not the best person to to give you all the information. But I'm I'm doing my best, uh, and I'm very much an idea person, uh, and and probably a little uh, not as good on the execution of it. But uh, the idea is there. Um, okay, so Julie has a question for both of us, so I'm going to ask Chica to join us. Uh, what are our goals in addition to achieving Katahdin? How do we prioritize those goals? And how important is it to finish? What do you think? Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what are our goals in addition to Katahdin? How do we prioritize those goals and how important is well, it to us? The main goal is Katahdin. I mean, we're doing this to do the whole thing, which is the whole through hike. And um, most of our goals center around achieving Katahdin. So we kind of have a daily estimated mileage that we're trying to do now or more. And we give ourselves a break once a week with a zero day. Um, so so all, our, all our little goals add up to Katahdin. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, I mean... We're very, very, very goal-oriented people once we set our mind to doing something, especially something that we've uh, talked about for a year and a half, two years, uh, have done our research. Um, we're very um, good at sticking to our, our, our plans to make it happen. And also, uh, Katahdin closes October 15th for the winter, not permanently every day but there's higher chance of it being closed because it's winter time there and there's snow and ice and rough conditions so we'd really like to get there a month before like mid-september um but the ultimate goal is to get there before october 15th so we just don't have to worry about the the snow and getting up there at the end yep uh and how important is it for us to finish um We'd really like to finish. Um, it's our dream, I think, both of us. Mm -hmm. We have that goal, that dream. We really want to do it. Um, we're determined to do it unless something catastrophic happens to one of us or one of our family takes us off trail. Um, catastrophic meaning an injury where we cannot walk anymore um, for a period of time or a severe, you know, a, a authentic family emergency that we we need to be there for our families so for a long period of time yeah not, uh, not something we can you know leave for a week and then come right. back that's that's not a big deal um, so so i think you know it's very important for us to to finish uh if for some reason we don't it's not the end of the world um but like i said we're very passionate about our goals um we don't set them uh lightly uh, when we decide to do something, we decide to do it, and and this is something that we've decided to put the uh, our willpower behind, our finances behind, um, and all our abilities behind, and and we just don't give up. So we're tenacious. We are we're gonna tenacious. Do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, Nicole, let's um, know how your cycling sleeves are working. I love my cycling sleeves. Um, really great idea that I thought of mainly because you don't have to take your pack on or off to change your shirt. So I start with my t-shirt. If it's cold out, I put my cycling sleeves on. They come up under the t-shirt and come down. It has a thumb hole just like the shirt I'm wearing. And so it really helps um, keep my arms warm from the wind um, or if it's just chilly out. And then when I get heated or warmed up, I can just peel them off 
don't have to take my pack off. I can even do it when walking. So I love them so far. They're great. Cool. Uh, Barb wants to know, are you happy with your shoes and would you buy the same ones? I love my shoes. My shoes are the Solomon's X, Solomon X Mission 3, I think they're called. And I really like them. They have a lot of room in the toe box area and I have a bunion on one of my feet. So that was really important to me. And um, they're great so far. Um, I have a, a new pair waiting for me at home with my mom to send to me when these wear out. So I'll have the exact same kind to start fresh with. And yeah, I, I love them so far. They're great. Mine are La Sportiva. I show them the new improved well, side. The new improved. <laughs> So the only thing that's happened was this part right here, and I've seen this on other people who have this this brand, the Wildcats. It starts fraying. The inside of his foot. Yeah. So so Chica took took some duct tape and and sewed sewed it. But okay. So these have how many miles are we in? Three fifty. Three fifty or so. Yeah. These ha these have um, three hundred and sixty miles on them, um, and they're dirty. But I mean the tread is still good. Uh, I expect to get another probably 300 miles out of them, um, maybe more. Uh, but I was on uh, one of the Facebook groups and someone was complaining about a pair of boots they bought at REI and they had 300 miles on them. They already had a hole in them. These things are holding up great. Uh, they're light. Uh, and, and in one of my videos, it might have been my, my gear video, I talk about going into REI. And I swear, uh, after research, I knew I was going to get the Solomons for, for me. And um, I tried on the Solomons, and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe. Um, and then I tried on the La Sportiva, and, and I will never, ever go back. I, if these lasted 200 miles, I would buy the same shoe again. Uh, I've, I haven't had a, a blister one. The only reason I would not buy this shoe again, uh, I wear a size 13, and they stopped making making the shoe past 13. So if my sh my foot grows uh, because of it all smells. the, yeah, of all the hiking, and I, I need a, a 13 and a half or a 14, um, I would have to buy something else and I would be very sad. And this is my shoe, just in case you wanted to see it. It's pretty dirty right now. And I love the shoelaces. You just tighten this cord and then you, um, you can put it in this little pocket right here so it stays out of the way. Never comes untied. I love it. Cool. All right, let's see. We're almost done here. Um, okay, last question uh, from Soaring Eagle. Uh, cash versus credit on the trail. Okay, both are wildly, widely accepted. Uh, cash is king in many places, and a lot of hostels will give you a discount. Um, for using cash, uh, sometimes a significant discount, like 10%. Um, we've come across a couple situations where credit cards weren't taken or the credit card machine wasn't working. Um, but, you know, we carry, you know, uh, between $100 and $200 in cash. Uh, and we uh, try to use the bank card as much as possible because it's easier to, uh, to, to look at the itemization at the end of the month. Um, so that, that's basically all the questions for this week. And um, one last thing, uh, my zero shoes. Um, I'll give you an update on that. I, 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 after going back and forth with the company, they finally uh, had me send a picture. Uh, I sent a picture of the broken strap. Uh, they said, okay, this is a manufacturer, manufacturer def defect. Uh, we stand behind our product. We, they, we'll send you a um, free shipping label so you can send them back to us and we'll ship you out a new pair. So uh, I'm just having those sent uh, home uh, and not to me on the trail because, uh, like I said, I still don't really care for them as camp shoes. They're too uh, unwieldy to get on. Um, and I, I like my $6 sandals. Uh, and I'll keep those, but the uh, zero shoes I'll wear, you know, when I get back off the trail for whatever. I don't know, um, but I'll have them. Uh, and, and they did stand behind their product. Uh, it was, I guess it's a slow time of the year for them. Um, they, they mainly cater to uh, barefoot type runners. 
uh, or minimalist runners. Uh, they're out of Boulder, Colorado, so this must be their really busy time of year because it really does take about two days for each communication. Please send me a picture. I send a picture two days later. Thanks for the picture. Uh, we need this. Okay, two days later. So it's taken a while to to finally get to the resolution, um, but I'm, I'm very pleased with the customer service uh, uh, and how it ended up. So thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you next week, or at least down on the trail. See ya. Bye.